Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pam Steinbach, and I'm the Director of Planning for DELBAT. I am, want to welcome everyone to the virtual online public me meeting for the Delaware Department of Transportation Council on Transportation, the draft FY 23 to 28 Capital Transportation Plan in conjunction with the Dover-Kent County MPO draft 20 to 22 transportation improvement programs. So we are going um, to be starting our pr presentation at 4.05. We just wanted to have um, some time for everybody who's joining us to, um, to get settled, have a cup of coffee, coffee, sit back for the show. Um, so we will be with you momentarily. We are going to loop this, this one small PowerPoint just to get you familiarized with how to submit a public comment, but, and I will go over it. We will, um, we will just loop that for the next four minutes. So we will be on. Shortly. And all of the panelists, if uh, besides me, if you could please mute your computers, I would appreciate it. And again, just for anybody who just joined, we will be starting the presentation at 4.05. And we apologize, we may have something wrong with the PowerPoint, so. Um, we will fix that technical issue and come back with the PowerPoint shortly. Zoom has been a little bit of a buck of a buck or for us the, the last few weeks. So my apologies. We'll be starting in about two more minutes. A few more people joining in, that's great. We're gonna be starting in about one minute. All righty. 
Okay, Megan, if you don't mind closing out of this PowerPoint and launching into our official presentation, I'd appreciate it. Just hold momentarily, everyone, please. All right. Excellent. All right. Okay. So again, um, my name is uh, what so we are here today. Welcome everyone to the Delaware Department of Transportation in conjunction with the Council on Transportation's draft presentation of the draft FY23 to FY28 capital transportation program, along with and in conjunction with our MPO partners at the Dover Kent MPO that is presenting on the FY20 to FY22 transportation improvement programs. Thank you so much for attending. Megan, next slide, please. <clears throat> Okay, so good afternoon all and welcome. Here are some quick instructions on how we will handle questions and public comment during today's CTP public meeting. If you would like to type your question in the Zoom session, please use the question and answer function at the bottom of your uh, screen. If you have joined the Zoom session via PC or other de device, you can also raise your hand to ask a question. We do, we will be hoping all questions and raised hands at until the end of the presentation. To raise your hand, you look for the raise hand button on the menu at the bottom of your screen. If you are dialed in by phone only, you can also press star nine to raise your hand. Keep in mind, we won't know your name, so we'll identify you by your telephone number when calling on you. If you wouldn't mind, if you are calling in by phone, we will ask you to state your name since this is, a this is official public comment. You can also press star six to unmute yourself. For public comment, we are, we are allowing three minutes and your topic should be transportation related as per the workshop agenda. Lastly, you can view closed captioning by clicking the associated button at the bottom of your screen. We are also recording this session and we will post it to our social media outlets afterwards in the next few days. All right, and in the meantime, if you, if you have any problems with the question and answer or, or the raised hand, if you do want to submit your, uh, your email questions during this session, you can email Nabila at the email listed here on the screen. Okay, and just FYI, the public comment period started on September 15th. That was our Newcastle County meeting, um, and it's going to extend through this meeting as well as the Sussex County one that's going to be happening on the 29th um, and the public comment will close on November 15th. We also have many other ways to submit comment. You can use the survey that we have on this link. You can also send an email to our community relations folks or you can telephone call. So there are many, many ways to please, we welcome all public comments um, and please submit them to, um, to us 
up until November 15th. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so I am the ring pastor for this uh, public meet, meet thing. So welcome again. My name is Pam Steinbach, and I am the director of planning for Del Dot. We also have James Galvin or Jim Galvin, who's the principal planner at the Dover Kent MPO. Catherine Smith is who's the planning manager for Dart First State. Will will be providing our Dart updates, and then I will be coming back on to speak on the new, the three new projects that are uh, that are set for draft for the new capital transportation program. We will round out with some notable project updates from Mark Lutz, who's the deputy director of our de de design sections for DALDAT. And then lastly, we will open it up for public comment. Okay, next slide, please. So without further ado, I would like to, to uh, transfer the presentation over to J Jim. Um, Jim will be talking about um, some of the MPO projects and initiatives. Um, if and Jim, I think you're unmuted, and um, you can take it away from here. Thanks, Pam. Uh, I'm going to turn turn my video off because you guys should be paying attention to the slides, anyways. Uh, next slide, please. So we've developed. Uh, we, we've done a lot of work over the last couple of years, and we had developed a a three year um, a tip. Well, the first the first time we'd done that in a while um, for for uh, the last three years, um, and and that's what that's what we had up there. Um, we're going to be transferring. We're going to be actually redoing the. Uh, we're doing a new tip come springtime. I hope hope to hear from you all. And uh, have the new have the new tip of the new projects on it available in April, and we'll have it approved um, before July first. Um, all everything that we do is based on our MTP. Our MTP is our our, our uh, master transportation plan and and uh, program, and that's um, and that's. Uh, we just finished that and, and, and approved it in January of 21. Uh, that was a big project and that drives all of our tip items and it drives what we submit to Dell dot for consideration. Go to the next slide, please. So the MTP, uh, the, uh, first let's talk, talk some basics about Kent County. Kent County has existed, has existed since 1992. Doesn't sound like a long time, but the, that's what it's been. Um, it's 586 square miles, three cities, and 17 towns. Population right now, according according to the latest census data, is uh, 181,800. Um, that's been a 12% increase since 20, uh, 2010, uh, a 44% increase since 2000. Um, so we developed the, the long range plan, the MTP um, last year. And um, actually it was adopted uh, on January of this year. Um, and, and the, 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 uh, cat, the, uh, I ca the uh, charts, the lower right hand corner of the, um, of the, the slide gives you an idea on, on what, what was included in, the, in that MTP. Um, for the short term, the first five years of the MTP, um, we anticipated 22 road projects, uh, 10 multimodal projects, eight bike projects, nine pedestrian projects, three transit projects, um, some freight projects, and safety projects. Um, what we done during the during that time period, and then. There were three, three uh, two other categories of time, 
uh, the mid the mid time between 27 and 34, and uh, the long range between um, 35 and 40, 45. Um, the the first two are are uh, very similar in number of projects. Um, we we didn't have a complete uh, a full list of projects to go into the MTP. So the last year um, we're kind of we, we ran low of projects. Um, we'll probably fill those in pretty quick, um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I, Go, go on to the next page, please. So these are the studies that we just got finished with uh, that we that or that we're working on right now. Um, the, the Banning and Clarence Street study over um, uh, across the street from Eden Hill. Um, we've been looking at ways to get folks through from North Street up to uh, Lockerman Street or Lockerman a Forest. Forestry, um, and uh, the the uh, Century Engineering has come up with a couple of solutions, and that that's almost done to be uh, done and ready to be press, uh, presented. Um, the Cheswell Traffic in Improvement District um, that's just started. Um, that'll be we'll be working on that the rest of this calendar year at least, uh, and maybe into next uh, to the rest of the fiscal year. The Dover Air Cargo Freight Access was just presented to our council and approved. Um, that that uh, shows some new street realignments and um, some, some development that we anticipate in the areas uh, just north of the airbase uh, between South Little Creek Road and the airbase. The Dover Bike and Pedestrian Plan update um, was a uh, uh, just uh, uh, was approved a couple of months ago. Um, that has several projects in it, and uh, we'll be we'll be selecting a few to submit um, in the next rounds for inclusion in the CTP. Um, the east-west freight route feasibility analysis it was uh, is it is in progress. I expect that'll be done by the end, end of the calendar year. Um, uh, that that's looking for ways to get um, freight and trucks from Dover and from all of Route 1 in Kent County over to 301 in Maryland um, and looking for the most direct route and places where um, we, there need to be some improvements. Uh, the last uh, project that we just submitted, submitted and was approved by council was the Harrington Intermodal Freight Terminal uh, feasibility. Um, we, uh, the, uh, the consultants WRA um, took a look at uh, three parcels that are down in Harrington and uh, designed a way for trucks to get onto the site and to work their way around and to, and to um, have sites available for um, developers to use as destinations or, or origins uh, with uh, uh, rail access, so the, the, with rail sightings that reach the, the parcels. Um, those are those are the ones that are, are were done or are are being finished up now. Go to the next slide, please. These are the ones that we're going to be working on um, over the next uh, the year or more. Um, we are. Uh, uh, looking to give Bower Speech a hand in identifying uh, biking and pedestrian improvements, both in town and uh, on the road from Route 1 down to town. Um, uh, we're going to take on some of that ourselves. And for the uh, route coming from Route 1 down into, into town, we're, we're relying on WRA and their engineers to, to look at what's necessary there. Uh, the MPO is also going to be um, attempting uh, uh, doing the uh, Camden bike and pedestrian plan. Um, th that will uh, likely be happening um, around about the end of the year or and, and certainly in the next year. Um, and we'll be looking at um, the, the, the places in Camden 
um, that improvements need to be made to so the bikes can safely get through town and so pedestrians have safe access um, to be able to walk around town. Uh, this year we are currently working on the Delmarva freight update, freight plan update. Um, we did this a while back um, and uh, this, this is our uh, new update of, the, of that plan so that things are, um, uh, are finished up and, and ready to go for a new round. Um, we're, going to be, we're going to be doing a study on the key road um, uh, or, or the key road of Salisbury Road where it is um, along the entire corridor to see what improvements need to be made um, and can be made to help move traffic uh, along the road from uh, Route 8 or, or North Street or Route 8 up to um, uh, where, where uh, McKee Road splits off at the light on the north end. We've already done a, a Camden corridor, a uh, rail corridor uh, and an industrial use plan um, and identifying all the parcels uh, greater than six acres along the rail corridor um, that, that could be used by a, a business looking for rail access. We're gonna be repeating that study and expanding upon it so we, we can address some of the zoning and some of the size issues of parcels uh, along that rail right of way. And we're continuing the, the uh, Transportation Improvement District support uh, uh, beyond the, the Cheswold prop, uh, Cheswold study um, over the next year. Next slide, please. <coughs> so the, the uh, studies that we had gone through and uh, identified up there, um, they they you know the, some of them resulted in one or two projects that might be done. Some of them in, uh, resulted in a lot of projects, uh, the, the Dover bike plan, plan especially. So each of those projects is going to be uh, identified separately. We're gonna run them through uh, our, our prioritization process. And um, they're going to be ultimately amended into the MTP um, so that, um, they, they can be considered for future projects uh, that Dell that might undertake. As you can tell, that's a lot of projects that, that are gonna fit into the MTP. Um, we might actually fill up some of the um, projects that are gonna get funded. Um, there, are, there are some ones that I, I think are, are uh, pretty uh, necessary and pretty exciting. Uh, just. Uh, building upon Horse Pond Road uh, and making it better from, from uh, South Little Creek down to Starlifter Lane, um, which is right next to the airbase, as, lo as well as the potential of uh, extending that from South Little Creek to North Little Creek and from North Little Creek up to White Oak Road to connect with the Garrison Oak Industrial Park. Um, I, I think the uh, the uh, uh, the um, project that's going to connect the Lincoln neighborhood to Eden Hill and ultimately get you out to Lincoln Street, or I'm sorry, um, to Forest Street. Um, that's going to be that's going to be well worth it just to get people off. Uh, the, the turns out of North Street and to get people from wandering around the Lincoln neighborhood um, because they, they don't have any direct access out to, out to any, any other road, but um, except uh, Rudy and uh, North Street. Um, so there are, there are several other projects in there. If you're interested in any of them, uh, please give me a call or, or email me and uh, I can get you a list. And, or I can talk about any of them as they come up. Please go to the next slide. So we wanna take the opportunity, now that we have your ear, to tell you about some things that we're doing 
that are, are new and innovative. Um, the, 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 the most substantial project I feel is the parklet pilot program. So uh, the Dover King County, um, excuse me a second, <coughs> is working with some partners, including Delaware Commute and the Air Quality Partnership and um, developing a parklet program. This is a, this is a, a small um, space that basically fills up a parking lot, a parking space. Um, and you can put it um, someplace along any of the routes, any of the roads we have, especially in places like Dover and Milford and uh, uh, Smyrna and any of the smaller towns with, with parking spots. And, or, or just a little blank space to put it in and um, show you how to put, how to uh, kind of build a parking, build a small parklet in the middle of it. Some chairs, uh, some, uh, <clears throat> some uh, grass, uh, grass-like stuff for the, for the parking area and just a place to, for people to gather. And there may even be some diversions for, uh, for the kids to play. Um, we're going to be, we, we've already got that, uh, our own, it's actually set up in our lobby down in our office. So if you want to see what it's about, uh, come on down to the Camden town hall and we're on the third floor and you, you can look at the, what the, what it looks like in the lobby, but we're also setting up a program where, um, we're going to have competitive grants that, um, we can fund a town that wants to have their own parklet. We'll, we'll, we'll develop a guide for them, develop a, a list of uh, uh, materials that they need and um, let them ha have their own if they want it. Just gotta fill out a few questions. Um, I'm excited about this. That this, is, this is going to, um, uh, it's gonna be great for, um, as, as it was, was up in Viola recently, for town, little town get togethers or town meetings or, or town parties, uh, someplace um, where, where it's, kind of, it's kind of defined as a space for conversation to relax and uh, have some place to go. Go to the next slide, please. The other thing that we're really proud of is that, um, our, our map burn on our office, Mike, Mike Ward, and our public outreach person, Helen Wiles, put together something called Map It. It's a map that lets you all identify transportation issues um, that you see on the street. Stop, take a picture, and send it to us. Um, and then we can get it over to whoever needs to know, know where it is whether it be the city of Dover, whether it be Del Dot or whoever. Um, Map it is available now. You can pick it up on, uh, for, for Android or iPhone. Um, uh, Helen was up till the wee hours of the morning talking with some people in Turkey that were helping us get it uploaded into, into Apple Play. So um, uh, it's available on Apple now. It's available on your Android device. And there's actually a link on the page. Um, if you want to know more about it, call, uh, contact me or contact Helen Wiles, helen.wiles at doverkentmpo.org. Um, that's what I have. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Um, one other thing. These are the projects that are in the CTP um, that we think are important. Um, uh, some of the ones I want to mention are the expansion and widening of uh, Route 13, um, both ends from Walnut Street to Lockmeath Way, from Lockmeath Way up to Punch and Run. Uh, there's, there's funds in this, in, in the uh, first year of the, of the CTP for those um, to, be, to, be, be, uh, to, to be able to start. Um, the East Camden and West Camden bypass, so the Camden bypass is included in this CTP um, to uh, get some work done. Um, if I remember right, uh, one of them is just 
uh, planning at this point, and the other is actually going to be, I believe, is going to be starting construction. Uh, Kent Street's going to start construction. Um, the one there, there was one bridge that I wanted to mention that it's a, there's a uh, improvements to a bridge on um, Route One. Uh, it's, in, it's in this as replacing a, a bridge 2-8008M on SR1. Uh, that is going to be happening. Uh, that's going to be, uh, I don't think that there's going to be construction this first year. It's, it's more design, but um, that is, may well cause, cause some issues with Route 1. So um, I, I hope it's being done I didn't look at that. I hope it's being done um, in other than summertime. All right, that's it. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, I'm sorry. Um, our, our partners at DART do have some updates and Kathy's got those, I believe. Yep, thank you so much, Jim. Yes, and um, uh, again, thank, thank you so much for that presentation that any questions or comments that, that you have to do, hold them till the end. But right now, um, Kat, Kat, Kathy Smith um, is going to update the group on the DART initiative. So take it away, Kathy. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Good afternoon and welcome to Delaware Transit Corporation's portion of the virtual public hearing workshop for the Capitol transportation projects for fiscal years 2023 through 2028. My name is Kathy Smith and I'm the planning manager with DART. Next slide, please. For the statewide projects, every 12 years, DART retires and replaces older buses with new buses that operate in fixed route service. As highlighted on this slide for Kent County in fiscal year FY 2023, six propane powered 25 foot cutaway buses will replace six 30 foot diesel buses. Next slide, please. This shows an example of what a 25 foot low floor bus is, and the make of this is a champion. Next slide, please. Older paratransit vehicles are retired and replaced with newer paratransit vehicles statewide. Also, under the federal 5310 pro vehicle program, our older buses funded through this program are replaced with newer buses accordingly. Next slide, please. DART has purchased and operates electric buses. We have received a fourth. Federal Transit Administration grant in the amount of approximately 3.5 million to purchase six additional electric buses for our fixed route services. As part of this grant, electric charges, chargers to support the operation of the electric buses would also be required, acquired. Overall, when the additional buses are placed in service, DART will have a fleet of 26 buses statewide, which represents 10% of our current fleet that are electric buses. Next slide, please. This slide gives you an example of one of our electric buses, what they look like. And this particular one is in our Lewis Transit Center. Next slide, please. This slide gives you an example of the electric charging depot, which helps to power the electric buses. I will now turn the presentation over to Dell Dot Planning Director Pamela Steinbeck. Great, thank you so much, Kathy. All right, so this is my portion of the presentation. Um, so I'm going to be going over the three new projects that are draft in the in this. ETP, but before I do that, I'm going to go over a little background of what the Capital Transportation Program is and what the 
uh, program for up the heat they think it is. So next slide, please, Megan. Okay, so we have a great website um, for the CTP process. Um, we have a lot of links on there to our planning partners. There's a bunch of resources on here, but specifically, and I know you can't read the development and I am going to read that be because I do think that it's super important. Every two years, the Department of Transportation develops a six year capital transportation program that I'm going to now call the CTP because that's a lot of words <laughs> um, that identifies anticipated capital investments. This program is developed in cooperation with the Wilmington Area Planning Council, otherwise known as WILMATCO, the Dover Kent County and uh, Metropolitan Planning or Organization, who our partners we, we had just heard from, from Jim, as well as the Salisbury Comico Metropolitan Planning Organization, that MPO is focused on the slice of Western Sussex uh, that composes Del Mar, Seaford, and Laurel. And then we also partner with Sussex County. So right now, the entirety of Sussex does not have a full MPO. So the projects that aren't in that Salisbury Western part, um, we work with our partners at, at, at the county. So this CTP program provides information on various DELDOT capital and maintenance programs, as well as estimated cost expenditures for each project along with, with its phasing, which is normally PE or preliminary engineering right of way and construction. Um, so they're, they're outlined um, for which fiscal year they are slotted to be, the funds to be used up. So um, this, so the back to the slide, we do have um, all of the CTP materials um, that are available. And we also have the a very cool ARC GIS way of negotiating around the so date via a virtual map um, that we're gonna show you, that I'm gonna show you later on in a couple more slides. Next slide, please. Okay, so the CTP process is now on a biannual basis. It used to be annual, um, but, but, but we did change that to every two years. So currently we are in what is the boxed area, which is uh, September of 2021, uh, the Council on Transportation, otherwise known as the COT, they're officially holding public meetings for each county. So um, we had drafted the projects back in the spring. We had a meeting in August. Uh, the, count, the council reviewed all of the 13 new projects and they all, they unanimously recommended release for public comment. So now September through November 15th, your guys time to, um, to make any type of comments um, or questions that you, you have. In December, this council will review the combined public comments for all of the 13 new projects. And then in February of next year, the council votes to adopt those projects. The chair for the 
council signs an approval, it gets sent to the g -g 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 governor, and then it will eventually be put into the the whole budget for the city. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is just a breakdown, um, just for your information on the project allocation per county. So we have a total of $4 billion set for the projects in, in the draft CTP. So they range from the 106 prioritized projects that, um, that are the uh, align item, but that also includes safety projects. It includes maintenance, traffic related bridge things. So there are a lot of projects that are rolled up into safety or traffic or bridge programs. They are um, like a lump sum line item and get funded not in the same way as the 106 current prioritized projects do. So for Kent, we have 0.71 billion. Um, so that is projects that are um, either in the concept phase, the actual the design phase, right away phase, or the construction phase of the of the respective project. Um, and we are right now. We we have finished New Castle that was last week. Kent is this week, and we are rounding out the trifecta of uh, meetings on the 29th for Sussex. Next meet, next slide, please. Meeting. Okay, so the first of the three Kent County projects is Brentford Road from SR 13 to Delaware 432. So that is just south of Mount Friendship Road. So it's ranked 45 in the 106 projects that, that were prioritized. So this project, about half of the improvements have been done by the, the, the developers. If you know anything about Brentford Road, it is sprinkled with new developments. And, and as part of the development coordination process, uh, developers have to upgrade portions, frontages of their development. They possibly have to do offsite improvements. So this project basically fills in the gaps of those already up, those already built upgrades. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, as, as I said, it's basically roadway improvements oh, that they include drainage, a lot of multimodal bike and connections between the developer built infrastructure. And this was in coordination with the Dover Kent MTP. So we are gonna go into a very, very cool way of not only learning about the project, but also more importantly, su submitting comments. So as um, you, you can see, all of the 13 new projects are highlighted in this magenta color. Um, we're only going to go over one of them and how to get to the public comment part, um, but if you just if you just click on the magenta, you, you'll see the description, the justification. Most importantly, if you hit the click here to submit a comment, it launches into a very 
easy to understand uh, user-friendly survey comment form. So it just asked a few questions. Now, just to FYI, if you wanted to specifically comment on Brentford Road, perfect, you can do that. Um, but if you wanted to have a more general comment or you wanted to comment on something else, you can just back that out and type specifically what your comment is. Just ask a few things about where you re reside, um, your feelings about a project or whatever general comment you would like. Um, and then it's just a few boxes. Um, the last part is if you do wanna be contacted or not, um, and then you just hit the submit button and then it sends it directly to our planning division. Um, and we have some very good metrics to show trends or uh, approvals that if you're for the job or not for the job. So thank you very much. Okay, so the next project that we have is the Garrison Oak Connector. So this is a new connector road um, that's located on the east side of SR1. It basically connects White Egg Road to North Little Creek. Um, it's ranked 97 in the 106 projects, um, and the pre and the preliminary engineering is funded for FY 2028. Next slide, please. This is a two-lane new connector road um, that will provide direct access to the SR1 Route 8 ramp to support economic activities. And this project came from the MPO as well as the 2021 air cargo facility. Um, so, and then we have the link. We aren't, aren't going to go into that link, but, but the last bullet is the same way to leave a comment and to see the, the whole SUA date and all of the projects that we have in the draft CTP. Next slide, please. Our last project is Irish Hill Road. So it's, it's from US 13 to Glen Forest. This improvement is just like Brentford. It has a bunch of developer built infrastructure done from the residential development Development. So we're just basically linking those multimodal and drainage and roadway improvements. It is ranked 60 out of 106. And the preliminary engineering has, uh, has it slated for funding starting in FY27. Next slide, please. And I yeah, that's what I do, do, do. Oh, yeah. And we do have a related CTP project that is, um, that was added to the CTP from the past. It is Irish Hill Road um, from Fox Chase to McGinnis Pond. So that will be starting preliminary engineering in FY23. So the uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to be turning it over to Mark Lutz, who's the deputy director for our design section. And he's going to be going over some notable projects located in Kent. Mark? Great. Thanks, Pam. Uh, so before, as Pam said, I'm going to highlight several major projects in Kent County that are going to be in construction over the next several years. Uh, before I get into that, just a few introductory remarks. Uh, first, hopefully um, you've you've heard this through all of our presenters and you'll hear it in, in the description that I have of the projects coming up that all of our major projects follow a, a complete streets philosophy and include facilities for transit, cyclists, uh, motor vehicles, pedestrians, freight, 
So that's just, it's kind of an overall philosophy of, of how our projects work these days. And so again, that hopefully tying in uh, with Kathy's presentation on the, on the transit side of things and all the other uh, projects, uh, both that Jim talked about that are maybe a little farther out and Pam talked about uh, that are getting into the CTP now, uh, that, that overall philosophy just this flows into our projects that are in design and construction uh, as well. Uh, also, I'm only going to be able to touch on a few projects today, of course, with our limited amount of time and at a, at a high level. Uh, there's much more information on these projects and many, many, many hundreds of other projects that are in this planning, design, and construction phases and complete, even if there's completed projects, if you want to go back and look at the history, uh, at the website that's shown on the screen here, uh, dell.gov slash projects. Uh, we call that our project portal. And you can go into that website. You can search by a name. You can go on the map and zoom in on the map to a location and then click on that project and get uh, all kinds of great information and contact information if you are looking for more. And obviously we can, we can work with you to provide more information than if it's not there. So we spent a lot of effort uh, putting a, a lot of information on these websites and keeping them as up to date as possible. Uh, we've added uh, new sections over the last couple of years to even further add uh, our, our project information uh, for even uh, more simple projects like a pave and rehab project uh, where we're just replacing in kind. But again, when we're building those projects, that's obviously disruptive to the public. Uh, and uh, future traffic signal projects that we are, are lined up for in design and then construction. So a lot of great information there. I, uh, if you're interested in transportation in Delaware, I recommend you go there and, and check it out and you can find out more about your projects. <clears throat> Next slide, please. All right, so the first project I am gonna hit on today is the Route 8, Route 15 intersection improvement project. Uh, this project originated uh, as part of our statewide safety program. Uh, that program is called our Hazard Elimination Program. And that program reviews all the crashes throughout the state uh, every year. So we look at the last three years of data, and then that program looks at the highest locations throughout the state with the highest crash rates. And we try to see if there's short, medium, or long term infrastructure projects that we can do to help uh, reduce those crashes. Uh, in, improving safety and reducing crashes is, is pretty much our number one goal here at Del Dot, and, uh, and so that's, that's what that program does. So this project uh, has a, was generated originally out of that program, and the project's going to address safety and traffic congestion along Salisbury Road uh, between North Street and Forest Avenue, and uh, it'll also make safety and operational improvements at the, at the name of the intersection, Route 8 and 15, or, or Forest and Salisbury, whether you like numbers or names. <clears throat> so the scope of the project, uh, well, before I get into the scope, uh, if you live in the area, you're aware that uh, when, we, when we built the POW MIA Parkway, uh, at its intersection with North Street, we have two through lanes in each direction getting through that intersection. So this project that I'm talking about is going to extend those two through lanes in each direction farther north, all the way north past Forest Avenue before it necks back down to one lane in each direction on the north side of that intersection. Uh, there'll also be uh, modified auxiliary lanes, improved sidewalks and multi-use trails within the project limits, improved traffic signal equipment, pedestrian signals, and improved roadway lighting. So this project is design is complete. It's going to be advertised for a contractor this fall, and we expect construction to start up early in 2022. And uh, barring unforeseen problems, it should be completed by the end of 2022. Uh, before I jump onto the next slide, I will I will put in my disclaimer that I maybe forgot to do in the intro that everything related to transportation projects and when whenever any of us give you any kind of schedules. It's always contingent. There are a hundred, if not a thousand things that can go wrong. We try to take all that into account as much as possible, but 
uh, you know, there's there's just many, many things that can go wrong that put us off schedule. And, uh, you know, in design, dealing with unforeseen conditions, dealing with utilities, dealing with right-of-way purchases, environmental impacts. And then when we get into construction, again, there, there could be things uh, underground that we thought we knew where it was, but, you know, a, an old utility might be in a different location, et cetera. So, uh, we do our best to try to find as much of that out as possible, but uh, but uh, unexpected delays uh, can always occur. So with that disclaimer, I am ready to move on to the next slide. Okay, uh, this is a uh, high level uh, aerial graphic of the Camden area, and we have a lot coming to the Camden area over the next few years. So I'm gonna zoom in on uh, pieces of each of these projects. I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of detail on any one of these individual projects. Uh, and part of the reason, well, part of the reason why is that in this format, we only have so much time and, and uh, uh, to go through these, but more importantly, we are doing a standalone public workshop to talk about all the projects that I'm gonna go over next in the Camden area next week on September 28th, starting at 5 p.m. And so when we're done, and when I'm done going through the, the slides here, I'll, uh, I'll make sure you know where to go on the Dell DOT website so you can uh, participate in that virtual public meeting, again, September 28th at 5 p.m. So uh, I'm gonna start with the uh, Capital City Trail Phase Three project. Uh, so next slide, please, thank you. So this is a trail project. It's gonna be on this, uh, it's gonna continue our work on uh, improving our low stress uh, trail network in the Camden and Dover area. Uh, it's gonna include a 10 foot wide path on the south side of Route 10 uh, from 1st 10th Court to, uh, to South State Street. It's, uh, it's gonna also include pedestrian signals and crosswalks at the intersection of Route 10 and Old Mill Road. So this project will again, tie existing trails to the east to some of the projects trails on the west that I'm gonna talk about next. And it's expected to start up in the middle of next year and, be, and should also be done by the end of 2022. Next slide, please. Okay, now on to the Camden Bypass. So the Camden Bypass was uh, first included in the town of Camden Comprehensive Plan in 2008. Uh, so since that time, it's been added to the CTP and we've started design and and, uh, and design is, is moving along. The project's going to uh, reduce traffic and in particular truck, truck traffic in the historic downtown town Camden uh, area. It's also gonna reduce travel time and reduce congestion in and around Camden. So the project includes a new two lane connector road. So two lanes meaning one lane in each direction uh, from uh, Willow Grove Road on the Southwest side of Camden and this is what you're seeing on the screen now. The road kind of uh, curves up to the northeast and then over to the east, over to where it intersects with Route 13, which is on the right side of the slide here. And uh, then I'll show you in the next slide before I get to that, but uh, then the, the road loops around uh, on the east side of Route 13 and then ties back in uh, again at Route 13 on Old North Road. So again, I'll get to that a little bit more in the next slide. So again, generally the project has one lane in each direction, auxiliary, auxiliary lanes at all the key intersections. Uh, it has four roundabouts are proposed. Uh, yep, thank you, Megan. There's the first three of them uh, at uh, South, South Street, Main Street and East Street. All of those roundabouts are on the west side of 13. And now next slide. Uh, here's where you can see, again, in the bottom left, uh, that's where the road loops to the north and then ties back around to uh, up to Old North Road. And you can see our, uh, our one uh, big uh, uh, five-legged roundabout that's proposed at the intersection of the, of the Camden Bypass, Route 10 and Rising Sun Road. So uh, in addition to those road improvements all throughout this uh, project, we're gonna have uh, shared use paths that, that are throughout the project limits that again, we're, are gonna extend and tie the whole uh, low stress network together in this whole area. And uh, the project I, I, for uh, contracting purposes, if we have any contractors uh, on the workshop, we're gonna 
bid this out as two separate contracts, East Camden Bypass and West Camden Bypass. So, uh, so if, if you hear us use those terms of the East and West, again, there are you know, specific parts of this proposed road that are East and West, but they're roughly gonna be built at the same time. And we expect them to open up to traffic roughly at the same time. The projects right now are deep into design. Uh, right away acquisitions are ongoing right now. And this project is scheduled to start construction about two years from now in the fall of 2023 and should be wrapped up in 2025 when we will open it to traffic. All right, next slide, please. All right, another major project in this area. And in fact, it intersects with the, uh, with the Camden Bypass project is the Route 13 widening project. This is another project that had its origins in that safety program that I was telling you about, the hazard elimination program. Uh, the various sections of Route 13 from Dover down to Woodside have appeared in that annual ranking of high crash locations statewide uh, for many years. And we've done many small things along this corridor uh, that have come out of that program, such as signing and striping and pedestrian signals and traffic signal upgrades. Uh, all the little things that we can do to, to help improve safety. But several years ago, we realized that this corridor just keeps showing up as a safety issue. And we really needed a bigger project to address the root cause of the issue, which is mainly attributed to the, to the peak hour traffic congestion that is occurring uh, along this corridor. So that's the genesis of this project. Uh, the, the main scope of this project is we're widening uh, Route 13 within the project limits, again, from uh, Walnut Shade Road up through Punch and Run Connector from, from two to three through lanes in each direction. Uh, we'll also have, again, shared use paths throughout the project limits. We'll have various upgrades to traffic signals, crosswalks, roadway lighting. We'll have a new traffic signal is uh, going to be installed at South Governors Avenue. And, uh, and uh, that's again for this level. I think that's about how far I'm going to get into it. Again, if you're interested in more information, see our project website or come out to our public meeting next week. This is another project that is uh, that is well along its way in design. Right away is is uh, beginning on this project now as well. And uh, this one's a little bit farther out. Construction's expected to start in 2024, and it's expected to be complete in 2027. Uh, this is another one that, again, from a contracting perspective, if anybody's interested, we're going to bid this out as two separate projects uh, just to break it up into two more manageable pieces. <clears throat> All right, next slide will get us on to my last project of the evening. So this is the Walnut Shade Road project. So this, this ties right into the, uh, the intersection improvements that are going to be made as part of the previous project I just talked about. Uh, this project is going to improve safety operations and multimodal connectivity uh, in this along this section of roadway. Uh, we're going to improve Walnut Shade Road to uh, 11 foot travel lanes, five foot shoulders. We're going to have a, a multi-use trail again on the north side of the roadway, and a roundabout is proposed at Peach Tree Run Road. So, uh, so this this is a, a small project in comparison to some of these other ones, but all in the same area. So we definitely wanted to mention it. Uh, this one is scheduled to start construction again about two years from now in fall 23 and expected to be completed in 2024. Next slide, please. So as I said a couple of times, we have a public workshop next week on February 20 or February, I don't know where I am, uh, September 28th at 5 p.m. Uh, although the, the time slot there says 5 to 7 p.m., don't let that fool you. Similar to this meeting, you want to be on at 5 p.m. to hear our presentation. And, uh, and, and you know, don't, so don't, don't uh, wait around for the later time slot there. Um, five five o'clock presentation. And then, of course, we'll take questions and answers. And for impacted property owners, we can set up separate meetings with you as needed. Um, but uh, to get to, the, to, to log on to this website, uh, it's not shown on this screen. So what you need to do is go to dell.gov and then right on the main screen is a, a link to public workshops and then click on the Kent County tab as it's kind of shown here as a tab. 
And then that's how you'll get to the screen that is shown up in our presentation right there. So, uh, so our project team is looking forward to hearing, uh, hearing, presenting to you and hearing your questions on those projects uh, next week. So with that, my part is complete and I am passing it back over to Pam. All right, great. Thank you so much, Mark. Okay, so now is our public comment part of the, or the presentation is done. Um, and now we are asking for any public comments or questions. So I do have a couple in the question and answer um, that, uh, that, that a few of us have answered. Um, so I will review those just so they're part of the transcript. So uh, Levy Court Commissioner Jody Sweeney had asked uh, for specifically for Kathy Smith from DART. He asked, what is, the, what is the process that DART uses to assess additional stops on bus routes? And he wanted to know if there was a process to request additional stops. Um, and then he had said, for example, the new senior living horizons at Kent will be opening soon and a dart route stop would be extreme, extremely appreciated there. So Kathy did respond. Um, she thanked uh, Mr. Sweeney for his comments um, and, and she had said that the first step is to conduct a field work assessment with a team comprised of planning, facilities, safety, and operations so staff. Um, she did specifically ask about the location of where the senior living facility is um, so that, she, that uh, her group can assess if it's on an existing bus route or if it's close or in proximity to an existing bus route. So uh, Heavy Corps Commissioner Sweeney did say that it is on the north side of Route 10 between South State Street Extended and Bay Road, nearly across from the Lebanon Road intersection with Route 10, a facility of 180 rooms, one third unassisted, one third assisted, and one third memory care. So K K Kathy, for, for, for further, just mentioned that um, just to ask for his email or contact information so that she can contact the planner in charge of Kent um, and so that they can follow up with Mr. Sweeney. So that was that question. Thank you so much for that. Um, so the next question was also from Heavy Court Commissioner Jiffy Sweeney. Um, and this question is for Mark. So Mark, uh, will the US 13 widening project change the right in, right out entrance to the Rodney v v village shopping center. It is currently nearly impossible to enforce without a station state police officer. So I think I know the answer to that, but I'm gonna ask John Gaines from our, uh, from our uh, a project uh, manager from our design team to handle that one. So I see okay. John lit up. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, th that project is not planning to address that situation. When the POW MIA was Parkway was built, um, it was part of the negotiation with the property owner of the Rodney Village Shopping Center that we would provide a left in from the Parkway into the shopping center, and then a right in and also a right out. But you're currently not allowed to make a left out. So. Um, we are not planning on revising that as part of that project. And if Commissioner Sweeney would like to discuss it, any of these projects with me, he's got my number and he's more than welcome to call me anytime. 
Thank you. Okay, so the next question, he, he said, always, thank you, John. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the next question we had is from Nathan Attard from the Delaware Transit Corporation. He said, he, he asks, what happened to the Lockerman Street at Forest Avenue project as listed in the 21 to 26 CTP? I live nearby and was excited for something that could slow traffic on Lockerman. Is it being removed from the CTP? So I was just attempting to pull up the, um, the project implementation um, so I'm scanning it, but if anybody on the panel has any information on that while I look, um, I'd be happy to, for anybody to jump in. Okay, Ackerman Street. So I, I'm Pam, it's Mark. Um, I think some of the staff in our uh, planning division that were maybe more directly related in, to this are no longer there. Uh, so I will chime in to my knowledge, there was not, a, so all of the background planning that went into that CTP project, which is everything, we're all the things we're talking about now on other projects, the MTP and the description of what was going to be in this was, related to a roundabout being installed at that intersection. And my understanding was that there was not consensus within the city of Dover to pursue that. So being that there was no consensus within the within the mayor's office or the city it's council, it's 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 uh, it's that good. we uh, we did not Mark move ahead it. with that project. Great. Excellent. So Nathan, I, I hope that answered your question. Um, hey Pam, this is Jim. I'd just like to add, you know, if if, uh, if there's interest in, in this project again, including uh, the improvements that we'd actually uh, thought about for um, Forest Street going up to Forest Ave, um, uh, it, it, it can certainly be brought back into the MTP and, and, and get it um, back into some kind of schedule um, if there's enough interest. So it, it we're, takes, we're good at that. We're good. So it, it takes uh, it takes some 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 uh, nominations to get into the MTP, and uh, it takes some support to get it beyond that. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Well, we dropped off on a few of our attendees, um, but I just wanted to, so we don't have any open questions in the Q&A and I don't see any raised hands. So um, at this point, we will just kind of hold tight um, if anybody has any that was the answer I was trying. questions or uh, comments that they would like to publicly comment on I um, from the attendees I would welcome the panel um, we, we would be happy to hear so otherwise I will just hold tight um, normally um, we would have, oh, and, and uh, Commissioner Sweeney, thank you. So he had um, just wanted to thank myself and all of the team for um, doing, for setting on this. And he does look forward to attending the Candon specific meeting next week. So. Mark and John, he will be, um, he will, I'm sure be answering or uh, asking questions next week. So that's fantastic. So again, I, I, I am normally on a in-person 
session, we would kind of just be chit chatting with everyone, um, you know, just talking about projects and current projects and proposed projects and stuff. Um, but uh, obviously, it's a bit more um, disconnected with the virtual. So my apologies on um, the delays in speaking, but we, we've done our presentation. Um, and if there is any other questions that people have, um, I, we'd be happy to ask them, or we'd be happy to answer them. But, it, oh, we have another question from the commissioner. So there is, so Pam, has there been a shift to roundabouts in the last few years? Do the connector road projects include roundabouts? Um, so I'm going to put that answer. So um, we, we so normally the and Mark can uh, chime in on this if he, he likes. He's a, a huge proponent, as of um, most of the people at Dell dot R. So. The roundabout is generally the, the preferred intersection layout um, if it does work from an operational and uh, perspective. I may be totally getting this wrong, Mark, but, but, but we normally do try to um, look and see if a roundabout is, is something that can be implemented on, on all of our projects first. Um, that being said, I just want to make sure that I have this correct. When you say, do the connector road projects, do you, do you mean, C Commissioner, the garrison connector road, or do you mean the ones out, out on, like out in Camden? I'm just not exactly sure. Um, I right now, so it like just to, to speak on. Um, generally, we do not, as part of entering projects into the CTP, we um, we really have just been trying to focus on what the purpose and need of a project. Is so at this stage and as part of my vision, we really want to focus on: is there a need? Is there a, a problem? Um, trying, oh, sorry, trying to um, trying to vet out what what that pro problem is with public comment, um, doing some traffic analysis, but we really are trying to keep it very upper level and broad so that when a, a project is put in to the CTP, it really is something that um, will be the the project and what the design is going to be and what the concepts are going to be are really going to be flushed out during the concept development and the de design phase, which Mark and, and John um, work on once it gets to the preliminary engineering. So um, I'm not sure if, oh, I think, oh, okay. So he was specifically asking um, about Brentford, Garrison, and Irish Hill. So um, Mike or Nabila, I'm not, I'm not sure if um, any of those, or Jim, if, if any, um, or Anson, if any of the roundabouts were talked about for those three projects. I, my apologies, I, um, I've been in this job about six weeks, so I'm not re really sure what happened during those public and comments um, and, and when it got flushed out. So I'm not sure if any intersection types were discussed, but, um, but they could speak to 
to that, um, and, and they can always unmute themselves. But generally, what we would like to do is, you know, obviously put it in the CTP, and then once the de design begins, kind of flush out what the intersection type is going to be. But I'll, I'll, I'll start out. Okay, great. Thank you, Jim. What I know about it is the, the garrison connector um, started that out as a, as a line drawn on a map, probably with a crayon, um, to, to give an idea on, on what uh, the city was looking for. Um, uh, I'm not sure much design or much engineering has gone into it to get beyond that uh, yet. But yep. we, um, uh, if, as we were drawing that line, there was no anticipation of a, of, a, of a roundabout being included in the in the project at all. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, since these projects, they're they're starting their uh, their preliminary engineering is is starting either in FY twenty seven or twenty eight. So we still have a fair amount of time um, before we even start the design process and a lot of things can happen during that that some you know development could be you know could could be happening the increase in um number of trips and, and everything so we do like to to try to keep it as open ended as we possibly can on that so but it's a very good question thank you for that the, um, Pam, I'll, I'll tack on to um, the, so the first part of his question, the answer is yes, there's definitely been a shift over the last really 20 years to, to have more of a desire for roundabouts. Uh, you know, they started to be used in the United States in the, probably in the early nineties in a couple states like Maryland and, and some other states out West. And uh, the, they've, in certain traffic conditions and certain roadway conditions, they've been shown to, to be by far the most effective, safest and efficient forms of an intersection uh, in many types of situations. And that's why, again, you see more and more of them on the projects that, that we're talking about, like, like the, the Camden bypass that I was talking about earlier. Uh, there, uh, you know, again, there's no, there's, <clears throat> there, there, that depending on whether you're looking at fatal crashes or injury crashes or total crashes, the, the numbers are there's something like 70 to 90% less crashes uh, at roundabouts compared to a comparable uh, traffic signal. So, uh, so overall, there's definitely been a shift. Uh, we have a section on our website uh, related to roundabouts where we have a map of all the roundabouts um, on the main roads in Delaware. We're not mapping out like every little roundabout in every subdivision, but on all the main roads, we have a map, we have information about roundabouts, and we have a video on our uh, on our on the Dell dot website about roundabouts. Um, the public acceptance of roundabouts has improved dramatically over the last uh, ten years or so. I know, um, you know, if if we wanted to, I'm sure John could tell some horror stories about some of the backlash we had. Um, regarding what was then the proposed roundabout at Route 10 and, and Moose Lodge, uh, you know, southwest of Camden, uh, not very far from where we're going to be tying in on the Camden Bypass. And uh, his team and our, our roundabout team really put a lot of effort into uh, explaining to the public why that was going to be the best solution there and why it was going to be safer and more efficient than, than a traffic signal. And, uh, and I think they were, they were successful. And I uh, I think a lot of the folks that were um, really didn't believe in it now that they've driven through that for a few years, I think I, I, I think they understand it now, they believe it, and they see how it's working, and um, we get very few complaints about that roundabout or, or other ones in the area. Um, for, uh, for the... Uh, for the new projects, like Pam said, what we'll do is when those start engineering, which is still several, you know, uh, several years out for each of them, we'll update the traffic projections and we'll 
we'll look at what intersections are within the scope of those projects and we'll uh, assess what we think is the best traffic control at those locations, whether it's just a stop sign or a traffic signal or a roundabout. And then we will, uh, we will coordinate with the public and uh, our environmental partners and uh, try to forge ahead with those, uh, with those ideas. And um, in general, uh, again, I, don't, I think there's definitely been less um, opposition from the public of, on roundabouts. Again, maybe it's, they're getting used to them or maybe they're tired of arguing with us. I'm not sure which one, but, um, but uh, yes, it's, it's definitely been an overall change in philosophy. And there are, are many more roundabouts on the books that we are looking at. In fact, including, although again, we don't know what we're doing on the Irish Hill, section of Irish Hill Road that is the new project in the CTP. Uh, we have a as Pam mentioned, we have a current project that we're starting on uh, at um, just down the street on I Irish Hill Road. And so we're likely going to be proposing uh, one, if not two roundabouts in, in, as part of that project. Uh, so we're just, uh, we're just getting our, our feet wet on that one. So we'll, we'll be out to the public um, probably next year on those projects. Uh, yes, Peachtree Run, um, as the commissioner put in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the question and answer. So, hey, if we have no other questions, I can talk about roundabouts for the next 34 minutes without a problem. So, uh, so <laughs> I'm just gonna, well. I'm gonna stop for now. Uh, hey, but, Mark, it's Jen Sinelli. I did provide uh, the commissioner with the link to the roundabout information on the website. Um, I have found that to help the public better understand them. Great, cool, thank you, Jen. Hi, uh, this is Anson, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, uh, just to tack on to Mark Lutz's slide about the Camden workshop there, I guess just for people's or public information, you kind of need to, uh, how should I say, um, register you know, to attend. So you can't really attend in the last minute, but just give you some time to register for that particular workshop. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. I mean, that's why I'm reading on that web website there. Thank you, Anton. Yeah, that's correct, Anson. If if they go to that link on the website, the and click on the Zoom link, that actually takes them to the registration, which would then give them access to the the workshop. It's pretty much instantaneous, but um, nonetheless, it would be best if folks got on a few minutes early. Yeah, thank you, John. Appreciate it. Certainly. All right, I don't see any open questions. There's no hand raise. We've dropped down to eight outside attendees. So <laughs> Mark, maybe we need to talk about your roundabouts. I do have to say, I have a funny story. I, uh, it, over, you know, obviously the roundabouts and stuff have been um, in Europe and, and the uh, UK for a, a much longer than the US, but I do rem remember going through, you know, uh, Ireland has a ton of them and uh, trying to go through them the other way. I think it was in Ireland, Ireland or Scotland, one of them. Um, but woo is uh, you have to talk yourself through it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look, I'm going to look right instead of looking left and I'm going to go left instead of going right. <laughs> so. These are the things that I would say if we were actually in a room together. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll say the movie European Vacation probably put us 10 years behind public <laughs> input and, and complaints on roundabouts. Uh, that and Jersey Circles. Jersey Circles. Oh, yeah. Explaining to the people that, to, to the world, that what we're proposing is not a Jersey Circle. That, that's probably the other reason why, you know, we have a lot of angst because uh, what what these roundabouts are, they're significantly different than Jersey circles. Yes, I know. When I, when I um, when I was doing Chalk Tank for Road, I I think I could have just put myself on record, like playback or record, saying these are not circles; <laughs> these are roundabouts. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Um, Jen made a good point. So, um, so for the two callers um, that we have, the um, if if you would like to 
uh, ask a question, you can always raise your hand by um, by pressing star nine if, if you do have a question. Just wanted to let you know that. Um, I, I can also allow you to talk, but that may be dangerous. I'm not really good on the Zoom. <laughs> Just FYI for everyone, we're going to be closing down the session just a few minutes early. We still only have three attendees um, and we haven't had any questions for at least a half hour, I think. <laughs> so um, I just want to thank all of the attendees um, and thank all of the panelists and the presenters for um, one pre presenting on all the great information in Kent. Um, and I am thankful for all of the panelists that were on, that were on the ready to, um, to answer any questions that we would have. So thank you so much. I'm going to close the session and uh, I wish everybody a wonderful evening. Thank you again. Take care now. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.